coming up on the May 24th edition of Carolina Week. Street celebrations often follow big Tar Heel victories. Will that tradition survive? And property taxes in Chapel Hill could be going up by hundreds of dollars. In sports, Carolina baseball starts the bid for a national championship. Are the heels up to the challenge? Meteorologist Rob Ellis will have your summer-like four-day forecast. All that and more, Carolina Week starts right now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. Hello and welcome to the summer edition of Carolina Week. I'm Caitlin Kleinard. And I'm Lindsay Michael. We begin with breaking news. Possible mercury, mercury contamination forced officials to close Davis Library on campus for nearly two hours Wednesday morning. The scare came from a UNC housekeeper who had small traces of mercury on his clothing. People inside Davis were checked to ensure they didn't have any traces of mercury on them. Officials determined there was no risk to the community after they found nothing more than normal background levels of mercury. Officials gave an all clear and students returned to studying in the library just after noon Wednesday. The town council has been considering a ban on all street celebrations following problems with the a April street fair apple chill and the after party mini call after chill. Will Weldon has more. Chapel Hill is still coping with the effects of violence from this year's after chill. Three people were safety suddenly became a major concern for everyone living in Chapel Hill. But the town council wants to keep other street celebrations that make the town unique. And part of that are our street festivals, including festival, including our basketball celebrations, including Halloween. Most concerns have to do with Halloween. The council recognized that keeping Franklin Street this quiet in late October is practically impossible. We want to manage it, we want to emphasize safety, but we don't want to shut it down. Police Chief Greg Jarvis says officers will need to be more assertive and end the Halloween celebrations earlier. And uh, they supported the need for um, some strict enforcement measures if necessary to manage the crowds. Student body president James Allred reminded the council that street celebrations help the community bond. These uh, festivals we see, these Duke, celebra Duke Victory celebrations or uh, Festival Apatil, are one of the few times where students are able to come and interact uh, with elderly citizens, with families, with children, and feel like they're part of that larger Chapel Hill family. So we want to make sure that stays in place. The next step is to make sure that students remain aware of safety concerns, like not getting burned by bonfires, so that the celebrations don't get canceled in the future. In Chapel Hill, I'm Will Weldon, Carolina Week. The council canceled Apple Chill weeks ago, but Franklin Street is still the place to be after big wins against Duke. Now that Apple Chill is history, the Chapel Hill Town Council must decide what to do with the extra funds. The Chapel Hill Library wants the money that would have been spent on the event. Library officials want to use that money, about $90,000, to buy new books for the community. This is part of a larger plan to extend the bookshelves by three feet, making room to house about 9,300 more books. Library Board of Trustees Chair Bob Schreiner says the proposal is good use of the money. We see that there's no risks associated with getting more books from the library. Books aren't going away. Uh, library's free uh, to everyone in Orange County. So it, it, uh, it seems like a pretty easy fit. The town council hasn't decided where the Apple Chill funds will go. The rumble of heavy mystery. The rumble of heavy machinery is everywhere, and it's causing some people to wonder if UNC now means the University of Never-Ending Construction. These flashing lights, chain-link fences, and barricades are signs of construction on Raleigh Street. This street is closed to through traffic, so many cars like this one come in just to come back out. Junior Aaron Hardy lives in the dorm beside the construction. She says although the construction is an inconvenience, she can deal with it. Uh, 
Officials expect Raleigh Street construction to last until August. Getting around is going to be a little tougher, and finding parking is always difficult. But you won't have to feed the parking meters, meters on Saturday much longer. You won't see this mass message flashing. And you won't have to worry about getting one of these. Students like the idea of free downtown parking on Saturdays. It'll encourage people to come out and do business here instead of going somewhere where that has a parking lot because it'll be easier for them to park and not have to pay. You can leave your quarters at home on the weekends beginning in July. If you want to use the internet, you might not need your ethernet cord much longer. Town officials are discussing plans to make Chapel Hill completely wireless. Citizens attended a forum where they could access wireless to give comments about the idea. Right now, only a few places off campus offer wireless internet access. Students who enjoy studying outside of the library like the idea. If Chapel Hill was completely wireless, then I feel like you'd have more opportunities to go to different places and use different coffee shops or restaurants or whatever um, to be able to study and do homework. If officials approve the plan, townwide wireless access will begin in the fall. Housing in Chapel Hill is already expensive. Add a proposed property tax hike on top of that, and even more people might have to look for a house elsewhere. In Chapel Hill, both the town and Orange County tax property. The town is not recommending a tax increase, but the county wants to raise the rate by at least six cents for every $100 your home is worth. Property owner Angie Owens thinks raising the taxes will affect the town's diversity. I think that raising the property taxes just uh, impacts the people that come from all different income levels. Here's a breakdown of property tax. Right now, property tax is $1.55 for each $100 your home is worth. The proposal would raise the tax by about $0.06 cents to $1.61. Average homeowners would see their annual tax bill go up by $210. But the hikes would be much bigger in the heart of Chapel Hill. This house, for example, is worth $1.4 million. If you're interested, you'll be paying $22,000 a year in property tax. That means an increase of about $1,000 by next year. And County Manager John Link thinks property taxes will continue to rise. Financing the budget each year will become more and more difficult because we do not have many um, tools other than the property tax by which to generate revenue. The president of Carolina Realty of Chapel Hill, Cowan Griffin, says he understands why Chapel Hill's property tax is so high. Um, if you want to live here and have a, a pretty unique town, uh, you have to pay a little higher property tax. And one last message from the county manager, he's just trying to make ends meet. The county manager will present his budget proposal to the commission on Thursday. Some campus administrators are questioning a 12-point drop in SAT scores for this year's freshman applicant pool. These prospective students are some of the first to take the newly designed test, which now includes an essay. Two possible explanations for the first decline in scores in 10 years is that students are taking the test fewer times or that they're becoming tired. The test is now 45 minutes longer than before. Admissions Director Steve Farmer says applicants shouldn't be too concerned because reviewers look beyond the numbers. But beyond that common conceptual scale, it's more accurate to say that we, we mold ourselves a bit to fit the individual circumstances of each individual student who comes along. That's the way we produce a class that does great things. Farmer says university officials will compare students' scores to their college performance to see what they can learn from the new essay component. A candidate for the state Supreme Court is refusing to apologize for confusion about an endorsement from former Carolina basketball coach Dean Smith. Lawyer Rachel Lee's campaign website includes a picture of her with Smith at the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame banquet. The caption quotes him saying, as a loyal Democrat to another loyal Democrat, win Rachel, win. It's an endorsement Smith says he never gave. The picture and caption are still posted. If a cop asks you for money, you're going to say yes, right? Oh, oh, no doubt, especially if it's for a great cause or to help me get out of a speeding ticket. Well, stay with us to find out more. <laughs> There's 
the whole week. Just the whole week. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Something wrong? Yeah, there's something wrong. You uh, want to get me some whole wheat? Oh, come on. Hey, uh, uh, hey, amigo. Hey, I asked you for whole wheat bread. This is not what I wanted. El Wido. Sorry for the confusion. You know, that's the problem with these people. If you want to serve Americans, you got to learn to speak the language. You know what I'm saying? No, sir. I don't. Enjoy your lunch. Yeah. Imagine the power of one voice. Click freedomcenter.org to find yours. UNC isn't like Texas A&M with its Corps of Cadets, but there's still a strong military presence here. Reporter Michael Abramowitz looks at the important role the ROTC plays in campus life. ROTC students are a common sight around the UNC campus, and in many ways they live a normal campus life, sharing most classes with other students. But they're committed to getting prepared for leadership as military officers. They take classes in military history, and you'll often see them working in close order around campus. The marching drills the cadets perform on the campus plazas develop their precision and teamwork skills for the important military jobs they'll perform later. And they look and sound pretty cool. Tar, heel. Air Force. The Army cadets go to Fort Bragg some weekends to practice maneuvers in the field. It's an experience they seem to enjoy, but Colonel Elizabeth Agatha understands the importance of this time. We're looking at leadership dimensions, how they do decision making, assessing, conceptual, different types of skills and char characteristics we need in, in future leaders. And for us at Carolina, it's, it's a blessing because most students that come to Carolina have many of those attributes because Carolina is looking for scholar athlete leaders to some degree to admit into their college. Colonel Agatha retires this summer, but North Carolina's contribution to the national defense continues as some of Chapel Hill's best and brightest prepare for the march to the future. At Fort Bragg, I'm Michael Abramowitz, Carolina Week. Airborne! ROTC grads are commissioned as second lieutenants and are expected to serve a minimum of four years in the armed forces. Many adults know what it's like to spend all day at a desk and more kids might be doing the same soon. Many schools across the country are abandoning their playgrounds for more time in the classroom. Some schools aren't even building new playgrounds. The North Carolina PTA supports a recently launched national program called Operation Rescuing Recess. Supporters argue children need more recess for exercise and also for more effective learning. Our ROTC grads are commissioned as second lieutenants and are expected to serve a minimum of four years in the armed services. We already did this. We already did this. Across the triangle, local law enforcement officers are putting in extra hours to raise money for the Special Olympics. On Sunday in Chapel Hill, Redmond's restaurant hosted Tip a Cop. Police officers served coffee and water to customers along with specially marked envelopes. Sent back tips as donations, Bill Frick is a retired officer who's been participating in fundraisers for the Special Olympics for 12 years. This event is one of his favorites. Where are we? Well, the Tip of Cop is just one of the events that's done statewide. There's multiple events. I mean, there's all kinds of events. We've done barbecues. We've done car washes. You just got to decide what works best and what's the easiest thing to do, what makes the most money. Special Olympics at lunch. The 2006 Special Olympics will take place in Raleigh from June 1st to June 3rd. Some people get on the wrong side of the law and wind up spending time in prison. After they've served their time, they often face a tough transition into mainstream life. Sarah Wiles shows us why one couple is trying to help with that difficult adjustment. This might look like a regular home, but for Tim Hayes, it's a refuge. Nelson and Valerie Morrow set up this house so men who are released from prison, like Tim, can have a place to call home and make a new start. Tim recalls his fears after getting out of prison. I was scared to death. I was scared because I didn't know which direction I was going because I really hadn't had any guidance in which way I was going. 
Valerie Morrow and her husband share a passion for not only providing a home for men like Tim, but also for teaching them the life skills they need. We, we really enjoy what we do. We enjoy having the opportunity to work with the guys and see them grow and develop. We, we try to teach them, you know, how to live life. Nelson Morrow says these former inmates have a difficult time transitioning back into their communities. He believes they need a friend just as much as they need a place to stay. If they find out that there's somebody that, that really cares about them, they'll start opening up to you and then they open their heart up and then you find out what they really are yearning for. Every day when Tim steps out of this house, he remembers what the Morrows say. Every step can be a step forward. I've never lived on my own. Like I said, I'm 40 years old, never lived on my own. And it feels great just to come in and put a key in the door and kick my shoes off and go to a room and say, hey, I'm home, you know, you know it feels good. And that makes the Moros feel great. In Hillsborough, I'm Sarah Wiles, Carolina Week. The Moros started this outreach after seeing how well men were able to stay on track if they had jobs and good housing after getting out of prison. And speaking of getting out of prison, I uh, hear that our weathercaster Rob Ellis just returned from state. Yeah, Rob, welcome back to the desk. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. It looks like uh, we'll be forecasting for the summer, so a lot warmer temperatures out there. And we all like the summer weather, but uh, we've probably seen the last of the cool weather in the mornings, at least. Temperatures in the low 80s have students sunning themselves on the quad. Make sure you use that sunscreen out there. And I'll let you know just how warm it will get coming up after the break. Stay right here. It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. change the world, you don't have to be rich or famous or play ball or lead countries. All you have to do is tell your family you want to be an organ donor. Talk to your family about organ donation. Talk to your family about donating life. Well, thank you for joining us for Carolina Week, Summer Edition. I'm meteorologist Rob Ellis, and we do have some summertime weather to talk about. We'll start out with Friday storms. It looks like a little disturbance will move through, giving us a chance for some much needed weather, but we also may have a little bit of thunder rumbles here and there. We have a warm weekend in store, though, once those storms are out of here, and it does look like once we do so, we're going to see lots of sunshine all through the weekend, including the beginning of next week. Let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite map right now to show you what's going on. Really several things happening. First of all, you see this little swirl in the clouds. It has a little cold front with it. Lots of cloudiness there to the northeast. And right now over the area, it looks like we are pretty good. We're in pretty good shape right here. Plenty of sunshine out there. However, as the system begins to push across uh, to the east, once it does so, it's going to bring that cold front with it. And that's what's going to give us that chance for some showers and thunderstorms uh, on uh, Friday. In fact, uh, we also have high pressure and control, and that's what's uh, giving us those nice conditions. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to the southeast and show you what's going on. Really over the entire southeast, we're doing great. So uh, plenty of sunshine out there. We have that high pressure and control. And with that high pressure and control, it uh, suppresses all the cloud development. So we're probably not going to see any rainfall until that front moves through. In fact, we can show you that front on the surface map right now. We'll go to the surface and show you really that uh, mid-latitude cyclone, we call it, right here. It's spinning. And uh, along with it, it has a cold front, a little warm front to the south. Once this pushes through, you notice the high pressure here right now in control. Once that high pressure slides off to the east, it's going to put us in a little bit more southerly flow. Temperature 
temperatures are going to warm up. We're going to see that uh, moisture move in. And once we do so, we are going to see some storms but begin to trigger uh, probably Thursday night into Friday, maybe Saturday. And of course, as this move east, moves east, it looks like the uh, beaches are going to be in store for some storms as well. I know many people for the summer uh, have beach plans. Let's go ahead right now to take a look at the four-day forecast to show you what you can expect for the next four days. Friday, there's that chance for thunderstorms and a temperature of 84 degrees, not too bad for May. And uh, overnight temperatures really in the 60s. It's not too terrible. Partly cloudy on Saturday and Sunday. Those are both nice days. Look at temperatures here approaching 90 degrees. So this is really good news. I really like the warm weather, so I hope you do as well. Mostly sunny on, on Monday with temperatures in the mid 80s. And uh, because it is summer, we're going to be pushing that beach and mountains forecast. Let's start out with the beach forecast to show you what we expect. Now, those storms that are going to be rolling through here on Friday, it's going to take them a little bit of time to move closer to the beach. So we will see that uh, there on Saturday with a high temperature, probably about 84, still a little cooler along the beaches uh, because they are going to have that cooler, cooler water. And uh, 82 on Sunday, partly cloudy skies. They do begin to clear up by the second half of the weekend. And then as we head into the mountains and take a look, if you're going the other direction, and uh, here's what it looks like. They'll also have storms on Saturday with another little piece of energy moving through. 88 degrees, a lot of uh, warmth in the mountains. Sunny on Sunday, as one would expect, and uh, 87 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the low 60s, so it's not doing too terrible out there. It looks like a nice summertime forecast. It's the first time I've been able to uh, forecast for the summer, and I'm waiting for those triple-digit days, the days when we have the hundreds out there. Oh, man. I know. It's going to get hot. I know. People think I'm crazy for liking that. but. <laughs> Wow, I like warm weather, too. Thank you, Rob, for uh -huh. the good news. I'm sure all this weather is making baseball fans happy. I bet so, too. But, you know, sportscaster Matt Estrus joins us now. And how is the baseball team season going? You know, there's been a lot of action lately, and I got some interesting news to report for you. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, coming up in sports, the baseball team, yes, they're on a roll with a minor hiccup today. We'll catch you up on the Heels' domination of Boston College and what's happening in the first round of the ACC tournament when we return. You know, this used to be a good neighborhood. Now it's a mess. You got all these polyps running around. <laughs> Colon cancer almost always starts with the polyp. Get the polyp early and stop colon cancer before it even starts. Where did you think you were running to, huh? I didn't even see you guys there. I don't know. Get the test. Get the polyp. I want to talk to my lawyer! Get the cure. I got a phone call! Take a pop quiz with me. In what film did I feel a need for speed? What was my call sign? Who did I sit behind in the F-14? Oh, and one more question. Who does your kid sit behind in homeroom? Know what really matters. Know about your kid's school and know about your kid. Find out 100 ways to know more, do more. Welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Matt Estrich. Let's get right to it. The UNC baseball team clashed with Boston College in the final ACC series of the regular season. After losing game one to the Heels, the Eagles came out strong, scoring the first run in the fourth and tacking on another here in the fifth. The Heels responded with these hits, took the lead, and they wouldn't look back. Senior pitcher Jonathan Hovis entered the game in the fourth and slammed the door on BC. Over the next four innings, Hovis gave up just one earned run on three hits and a walk and struck out four en route to a 5-2 Tar Heel win. Tonight, uh, going in early like that, you got to keep the game where it is. Um, as long as I can do that, we'll, we always have a chance to win. Our team's good uh, hitting. Um, we're going to come back. Uh, I knew we would. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping, keeping the score close. On Saturday, the Heels completed the sweep of BC, winning 5-1. Daniel Bard and two relievers held the Eagles to six combined hits. With the win, the Heels clinched the ACC's Coastal Division Championship. The dismantling of Boston College this weekend also earned UNC the number two seed in the conference tournament. Play began today in Jacksonville, Florida, as the Heels clashed with rival NC State. UNC raced out to a 3-0 lead, but it didn't hold. NC State pounds ace Andrew Miller and wins 9-3. Despite Wednesday's rocky outing, Andrew Miller is one of the top hurlers in the country. He set a Tar Heel record for career strikeouts on Thursday. 
Miller started the game on fire, sitting down six Eagle batters in the first four innings, including this guy. You'd see him if you saw him. Caught, at, caught him looking. When the dust settled, Miller posted 11 strikeouts for the game, and that would be 290 for his career. The junior also became the Heels' first 11-game winner since 1995. Setting records isn't the only thing Miller is known for. He's projected to be a top three pick in this year's draft. Next, year, next week, we'll bring you an up-close look at the future major leaguer. Men's tennis star Ryan Lucchici is the top senior player in the nation. Lucchici was named the National Senior of the Year by the Intercollegiate Tennis Association. A 2006 All-American, Lucchici is currently seated in the top 16 in the country in singles. Also honored was assistant coach Don Johnson, seen here without the signature Miami Vice white blazer. He's the assistant coach of the year. Typically, a sports team will play half its, of its events at home. Reporter Lacey Rintel says for the Carolina men's golf team, that number is actually zero. All right, unfortunately, we appears we do not have that, so maybe we'll get that story to everybody next week. Lacey did a good job on it. It's a pretty interesting story as to why Carolina Golf doesn't play all their games at home. And again, maybe we'll get that out. See you next week. Really, I didn't know that. It's really, that's really interesting. Thank you so much, sure. Matt. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Right. Well, music and Carborough often go hand in hand. And never more so than now. We'll show you why this music video is all the rage in the area. No, he's trying to play. At the farmer's market, I buy my spinach. For the prayers. Dennis, you seen it, you seen it, you got a lot of funky toys. If you disrespect, you better bring your boys. You know you're gonna... Sniffing things to get high can deprive your brain of the oxygen it needs to keep you alive. If you have a story idea, contact Carolina Week at 843-8292. You can also visit us online at carolinaweek.org. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365, UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27599. Have you ever wanted to be a big star? Oh, I'm not ready to go on American Idol. You don't need to. All you need is a hit song. Just like a couple of Carbor Carborough musicians found out recently. My town of Carbro might be the last place you'd think of inspiring a hip-hop tribute, but just such a song has taken the community by storm. It's Carbro, a wordy tune heralding the charming attributes of the small town, spread like wildfire, primarily through word of mouth. Come on, Carbro, let's make some noise! If it's locally owned, it's Carbro! Brian Risk was shocked at the immediate response to what started as a joke. We put it on customserenade.com, and then it just got emailed all over. We saw that just tons of people were coming from the university, and um, checking our web statistics, we were able to find this out, and, and that the song was downloaded thousands of times. We're like, what the heck? What the hooey? Who's the best in show? It's Where you want to go? Many young musicians have found their audience by putting up websites like itscarbro.com or by posting their music in blogs like MySpace. However, if you really want to electrify a community, there's still nothing quite like getting your song played on the radio. It was Billy Sugarfix who managed to get a foot in the door at a local radio station. And they played it, and I don't think more than 10 minutes went by before somebody had called and asked them to play it again. Demand for the song was so great that the pair was persuaded to make a music video. From Carpo, I'm Ashley Perryman with Carolina Week. <laughs> the video made its premiere at this month's Flickr Film Fest, and now you can see it. It's at Carborough.com. That, that is a, a video. very interesting video, guys. I, I don't know about you, but... I need some of those shades that the guy <laughs> had. I think I'm going to wear those next week. I think they would look good on you. Yeah, doing the weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might need them out there because it's going to be nice this week, too. So keep that in mind if you're heading out. Uh, nice weather for the weekend. So uh, 
That does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thanks, thanks for watching. Have a great night. The shades on.